So we can use these harder pastels, but they're not easy to use. They will cut into the paper, but when they tint into the white pastel, they're not white chalk, not quite so bad, are they? And there's a nice little scene that we've always got our winter scene there now. Just putting in the lights back in between the branches. So we can work both ways with pastel, which is lovely. And finally, if we want to just show these buildings a bit. We've got some little buildings going on in the back. I'll just hint them in some of this. Some of these warms. There's a building in the background there. There's warm just coming through the onto the surface here as well. Hopefully that gives you another idea of another way of using pastel, but this time over white chalk. So we've used it with water, we've used it with white chalk, and now we're going to go to the much more traditional techniques. Big some of that warm dip into the mountains there. The sunlight's coming through and across. There we are then. Right. Now I'm going to take my unison pastels. And we'll come down to a softer painting down below. Softer pastel, that is. And we're going to go to the old traditional blocking and blending. So, very similar to what we pastel paper, a single coat of the Unison pastels. And you'll see just how much softer these are almost immediately. Straight down into here, I'm going to block over the whole of this and blend it in. And then I'm going to pass the on over the top of that. So there we go, now straight away let's really get a good layer of pastel onto this paper which is very rough. I do like working on watercolour paper on hot press much more because um, we haven't got this fighting of this textural surface to do, which I don't like at all. I've got to get rid of all of that because I don't want that texture showing through. It was even annoying me a little bit on the portrait the other day as I was doing because it was showing through not like a canvas. But let's get rid of all of this. Rubbing it well in. Now this is killing the colour at the moment because I'm rubbing it in this month. This much it's making it very dull. Just give me a coating to work into. There we go. Now I can start to really get my colours going. Let's bring in a, a deeper turquoise at the top here and again blend that right in. A bit like we were doing into the chalk above. So you can see how much stronger this colour is this way than it is on the chalk. I'm getting that well in so that I've got a fairly thin coat of this. And I want to come down with my creams again to here. Just blend that in. Beautiful soft effects. Quite different to the one above. I'm going to show you them both in just a moment. And I want to go a little bit warmer in that one above there, so I'm going to start to add in a little bit of this pink into it here into the uh, cloud at the edges there, around the mountains here a bit, as it comes out through here. Much, much stronger, more vibrant colours we can get this way. across it anytime we want to bring in colour over the surface. So I can just use that surface texture now to bring this lighter colour across. We're even lighter still if we want than that. Just come what I've got here. You can lighter still just down here. 
just by scumbling it over the surface I can get this effect of light. Which is a much pinker light than the other one. Up and through here as well. There we go. That's got our massive sky. Now uh, I'm going to use a, a mid grey for the mountains at first here just to give myself a base coat. I don't want to work directly over the paper as I say. Up into there. Through. Before I bring the mountains down and through there. Here, and I want to start bringing in my deeper tones. Oh, that's a very deep one, that's too deep. But now it's going to come down there, just softly blending it through again. I'm going to mix colours together here to get these tones before I put the lights back in. So I've done my mid-tones, now I'm coming down towards my mid and darker tones here. These shadows and amongst the Mountains, just softening down and in. By mixing purple and blues together here. So three scenes, not brilliant compositions, but just good enough what we're doing from these Scottish islands here. trees here and use that to block the whole of that piece in. So we play it against these cooler blues and this is where this business of the colour hues comes in because we're playing different colour warm and cool blues against each other here now. And to lose that paper behind, it's very important to me to lose that paper behind.
how we can blend the darks and the lights together and the different colour hues together here to get that feeling of the, the cool shadows coming down through here. And when we put the whites back into here shortly, you really will be able to see how um, softer pastels give us a much nicer brightness. And I won't be using a cheapie, I'm using a cheapy, using a cheapy mode, a harder one, just to get the background colour so it work over. And right down to there with that mode. That going to work all the way through that area. Um, snow's coming in there with this half plaster just to give myself a basic grounding of the purple coming through here. And then we'll come back to this deeper line of trees here. Yes, I'm going to use a very deep blue down here before putting the lights back in again. One colour over another, building up layers so that they glue through each other almost transparently here. cool shadows behind by putting these darks in now. I'm going to go back into that with some of these purples. Much, much deeper, warmer purple this time. So that it brings it forward. This is a soft pastel. Look how beautifully it's going on. warmth into here. Now we're going to start working up the lighter colours there. A little bit of yellow ochre and just start to bring in the warmth of the sunshine coming just down onto the hills here. Gently through there. Ever so just ever so gently just tickling it across the surface just to get the feeling of the warmth. Even right back here, the sun coming in amongst these trees. And I'm just ever so gently with my with my pastel now, just on the very, very surface. That same colour is going to come into the warmth shining across these tussocks of grass. Just touch it. Right, now we can start to think of the lighter colours. So let's come back into these very light creams back on the mountain here. And because these pastels are softer, I can really lather them on. And that comes down there now and immediately gives me my sunlight.
beautiful, aren't they? And this is what I mean about the soft pastas. They have this lovely creaminess that the hard ones are just not going to give you the same effects. Behind these, just feather this cloud in that comes into the mountain here, behind here. And gently bring it across the mountains here, the hills here at the side. Just gently bring them through, just tickling the surface, as I was saying earlier. This is quite a warm colour. I want to go very, very light blue now. Extremely light blue. That's the one I want. As I bring some of these cool... Again, I can, you can see it crumbling away here, but I can push this very light blue into here and get the creaminess that I want. Against the warmth of the cream. Right through to my whites, my eventual whites now, along here. And look how that goes on there. Because it's so much softer, I can really push it on and feel this snow coming down across the mountain. So this is traditional pastel now. This is using it, blocking and blending. I'm blocking in and I'm blending and I'm blocking in again. Working all these lovely colours out together. coming down here through on the background. That's my very light blue again. Down here. It comes behind here. And comes all the way across behind the uh, wall here. And here. I'm going to let now the paper, the texture of the paper, do some of the work. I'm just letting, putting it on quite lightly, look, so that the uh, purple is just showing through. I'm going to work my way down into amongst these tussocks in just a moment. Tussocks and the trussocks. in between the tussocks, the bits of snow. And these are cool bits of snow because they're very light blue. And I'll take my very light cream and just come back in and put in some of these highlights of cream that are in between. Back to here and through. To my lightest one, let's have a look. There we go, yes, that's what we want. Get the feeling of sunshine as well. Look at those lovely effects, eh? Now we go to our darks because I haven't yet done our very darks here. I'm going to take my black and on this wall here, we'll just now the edge of the pastel because this is a very soft pastel, so I've got to go quite carefully and to bring up these trees with the edge of the pastel up through right up into here, and we'll just tickle these branches in. Come up through here. And this is the nicest composition, and of course, with the nice composition, we've got this these lovely, expensive, but soft unison pastels on through here. The same, and these darks are coming into here as well to lead the eye in and make the background seem softer and bluer because this black is quite warm. Now, back to my deep 
purple. I want to just get the feeling of these soft edges of branch just scumbling the pastel across to get the feeling of these ends of these um, twigs and branches here. I'll just smudge those a bit to get the feeling of the twigs. Same with that very deep blue, I'm going to bring some of that into it as well and just smudge and blend that in as well amongst this lot to get this, the light coming through the branches here. And there we are, North Carolina. Maybe you can use this technique over there. And there's a nice little scene for you. I think I've almost done enough for this little workshop, just to give you an idea. Isn't that a lovely... Nice light coloured snow scene. We'll put a little bit more light just in between here and there. So we'll look at those differences in techniques now again. I think we can call that one about finished. And we could just put on one or two little bits of white, pure white, just down to here. Just to get to catch a bit more light in the, the foreground and throw me out. That'll do it. Let's take another look at them now, shall we, together. We've got this technique of the blocking and blending. We'll take a closer look. And you can see how well that works. That's an ordinary ungrous paper. And uh, you can see the texturing and the way that the underpainting comes through from the pastel paper there. right up into those trees. If we zoom out again how the effects of warm and cool blues and light against darks work. And if we go up the picture we can see the two together. There's the much softer, harder pastel over the white chalk. So much softer effects. Much more gentle. Again, if you see the two together, you'll see what I mean. And last but not least, the water and pastel on the watercolour paper. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that, and you can go back and look at the other films I've made of the different techniques of water, watercolour, pastel, and all the different mixed mediums. But it was, you asked for a fairly simple one to do, and I would suggest you have a go at this one. So see putting a mark on it straight away. Um, depending on the sort of pastels you've got, but do experiment, do explore, don't be afraid to make a mess because it's only by exploring and by experimenting and by playing and having fun that we will make new things happen, that we will invent new things, that we'll progress. I once um, had some idiot write to me on here saying only fools play. No, we have to play. It's the fool that doesn't play. It's the fool that stays safe. It's the fool that doesn't progress. It's the, fool they think, it's the fool that thinks they know it all that is the idiot, is the clown, is the jester. We have to take risks. To take risks we can fail. But we're not going to progress unless we take those risks, I think. So I've opened this up to you as just three simple ways of working with pastel and hope it's been useful to you. Mm -hmm.